Hey divers, it's Ali Pierce again from Ali Pierce Scuba, another Tech Tips. And uh, we're going to talk about a really interesting topic today, uh, uh, and that's hoses. I know, hoses. Uh, every regulator has hoses, and hoses have changed over the years. I, look at right here. I actually get these good old, old-fashioned two... Uh, double hose, two hose regulators in for service very regularly. Now, that's partly because of my vintage background. And you know, we have a, another playlist, Alec Pierce Vintage Scuba. And I know a lot of you are enjoying that. But we actually get a whole bunch of these in. Look at these hoses compared to a modern hose. Yeah, they've changed a whole bunch. So hoses have changed a great deal. And I want to spend a few minutes talking about hoses. Uh, a lot of you have been asking about hoses. Uh, so let's talk about that for just a minute. You'll notice, by the way, I'm wearing my Sea Hunt t shirt. Yeah, this is Sea Hunt. This is from 2011. It's one of the Sea Hunt events that we did. Well, Mike Nelson. My hero. Anyway, a Sea Hunt event that we did, uh, and it was fantastic. I was part of the cast, and we put on Sea Hunt uh, scenarios. We fight with alligators and bad guys, shoot with spear guns. It's a lot of fun. And you can learn some about that on my Sea Hunt playlist. So go to Alec Pierce, and you'll see our Sea Hunt playlist as well. I really appreciate the comments. There's so many guys out there. I don't know if it's an indication that divers are old. <laughs> or what it is, but so many divers have commented on the vintage scuba and also on the uh, my Sea Hunt playlist as well. I really appreciate that. On the tech tips, I try to deal with ideas that will make your diving a bit easier, a little more fun, maybe make your equipment last longer, and sometimes some safety tips, a little bit about training and so on. 58 years I've been scuba diving this year. I know it scares me too. And Fantastic. It's just been a fantastic life I've had. It's not the only thing I do, but, but this part has been just fantastic. And I picked up a lot of, uh, a lot of tips. I'm no genius. i got to be honest with you. You probably know this if you're, uh, if you're an adult, that many of these tips, ideas that I have were picked up because I made mistakes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm still here, and I learn from those mistakes, learn better ways to do things and so on. And I'm still learning every day. Uh, and uh, I'm going to share some of these ideas with you. If you like them, great. If you don't like them, well, don't use them. At least you have more information. It doesn't hurt. So we're going to talk about hoses. Every regulator uses hoses. It has to because the air has to be moved around a little bit. The, the air comes out of the tank into what's called the first stage, and the first stage reduces the air pressure to intermediate pressure, about 150 psi, and then it distributes that air to various things. Some of it goes to your mouth. Good idea, huh? Yeah. Some of it goes to your primary second stage, which is in your mouth. And then there's another second stage, the secondary second stage, or safe second, or octopus maybe, uh, that hangs at your side in case your buddy runs out of air. He's got some air as well. You need some air as well for your buoyancy compensator inflator. Uh, if you're using a dry suit, a modern dry suit with an inflator, you need another hose that comes down under your arm usually into your dry suit inflator. And, the, and there's another hose as well. If you're using an SPG, submersible pressure gauge, measures the air pressure in your tanks, you know how much you have left. There's another hose that goes to that. So you can have three, four, five. I've seen as many as six hoses coming out of the first stage of your regulator. Hoses. Six hoses. That's a lot of hoses. Typically, a standard uh, recreational type, uh, even uh, even a technical type of regulator, has uh, four hoses. Four hoses. It looks like this. This is a pretty typical uh, recreational regulator. This is actually one I picked up right from our rental department. Uh, pretty straightforward. First stage, I was just talking about. And then from the first stage, there are various hoses. So here's a hose that comes around and goes into your primary second stage in your mouth. That's what you breathe from. There's another one that goes down to that secondary called the octopus. This hose is longer, of course. I think you all know some of these principles to make the hose longer so that your buddy can breathe from this and he's not jammed up against you. Uh, and, and it's bright yellow uh, so he can see it. It hangs in front like this. He can grab it and, and get some air if he needs to. And then, of course, this is a hose over here with the QD, quick detachable fitting on the end that goes down to your buoyancy compensator so you can inflate your buoyancy compensator. The same type of hose, virtually identical, is used for your dry suit. If you have a dry suit, it goes into the next port. These are called ports, the holes. Goes to your, and it goes underneath, same type of QD. And then lastly, there's another hose that goes to your pressure gauge, your submersible pressure gauge. And you probably on the, uh, where the pressure gauge is, you probably put some other gauges as well. It becomes like a little dashboard. So you have your pressure gauge, how much air do you have? You commonly will have a debt gauge or maybe a computer in here. And you also usually have a compass. So this is your little dashboard. Uh, how deep am I? How much air? Which way am I going? You, you know, everything. So this is a pretty typical regulator. What I want to talk about today is the fact that these uh, these hoses have changed over the years. These hoses w were like this since the 60s, when my good friend Sam LeCoque produced the first single hose regulator in North America. 
the first production made. And don't, don't yeah, let's not get into somebody else made one earlier. I know all about that vintage stuff. I was there, remember. But Sam Lecoq, I think, is is fairly enough credited uh, sports waste company with making the first production popular, if you like, uh, single hose regulator. 1962. 1962. Kevin, help me here. That's what. That's that's 50, 50 years ago. Yes, it's over 50 years ago. These hoses haven't changed very much. They're basically a rubber-covered hose. Now, actually, in actual fact, this rubber covering doesn't do anything. It's just there for looks. Because people don't like the look of braid. It's just nylon braid. Nylon braid is a tan color. It looks like a burlap sack underneath this. Actually, in the very middle, there's a very strong, uh, and obviously airtight, pressure-proof, fine, thin hose that goes through the middle. That carries the air. And then to make it strong, to withstand the pressure, it's wrapped in nylon braid. Just like your tires in your car, or radial tires, or, or, or whatever kind of tires that have braids in, in, in the tires. <clears throat> and that's wrapped around that hose, that inner hose, to keep it, make it strong. And then, they cover it with this hose, to make it look good. A number of years ago, some companies tried to bring that out without the rubber hose, just the braid on there, and people didn't like the look of it, so they went back to the rubber. So that's the way these hoses work, and they haven't changed very much in over 50 years, until very recently. Let me show you a new type of hose that you undoubtedly have heard about. I'm going to share it with you, and I'll talk about is it good, is it bad, should you change, and what should you do. This is the new type of hose. Now, you all right away, without my saying anything, you can see some of the differences. They have colors. Well, sure they do. First of all, <clears throat> The octopus is still the same, nice long hose, but bright, brightly colored. And then in this particular case with this regulator, uh, the, the, the primary uh, regulator, second stage, is white. The hose is white. You can actually get these in different colors, but I'm not a big fan of pink. I look good in pink. I look good in any color, but I'm not a big fan of pink. But you can get pink and blue and orange, whatever color you want. So that's kind of neat, too. You can get different colors. Black rubber comes in black rubber. That's the way it is. Uh, also, on, on, on this regulator, you can see that the, the QD hose is made of this. It looks a little different, doesn't it? It's not rubber. I'll talk about that in a minute. And even the pressure gauge comes under there. Well, these are actually the new uh, Flex hoses. There are different brand names, MyFlex and TrueFlex and so on, different brand names. But essentially, what these hoses are is the very same, very strong, synthetic inner core. Very thin tube going through the middle. Uh, the air actually travels through. Then that is wrapped in nylon, uh, again, for strength. So, so far the hose hasn't changed. But what they've done with these newer hoses is they have now wrapped the outside with a very strong nylon as well. Maybe they've colored it. Maybe they haven't. It's academic. The outside is now wrapped in nylon as well. What's the advantage? Or is there an advantage? Well, there are advantages, as a matter of fact. There are two advantages immediately, and there are other advantages that we're discovering. This is not new. It's been coming up for about 10 years. One of the very first advantages, <clears throat> which is pretty straightforward, is a weight saving. Rubber, by its very nature, is heavy. Rubber is heavy. A pair of rubber boots compared to a pair of nylon boots, the rubber boots are much heavier. So I actually took these two regulars, and they are identical. That is, first stage, second stage, safe second, a uh, BC inflator, and a pressure gauge. And I weighed them. The standard regulator, like the one that most of you, I think, are using today, works perfectly. This fine red weighs just over five pounds. This regulator, same regulator, <clears throat> same device, same performance, weighs about three and a half pounds. Big deal. A pound and a half. <laughs> a pound and a half isn't that much. But a pound and a half is you don't have to carry around when you're traveling. Right? It's also a pound and a half you don't have to worry about when you're standing in front of the ticket counter at Air Canada and uh, the, the, uh, the, the cute agent there is weighing your bags. You don't have to worry about that pound and a half. Eh, it's not a big deal, but it's kind of nice. Another advantage of these hoses is their flexibility. They are, as their name implies, very flexible. If you take a rubber hose and you try to tie a knot in it, you have a problem right away. It's hard to tie a knot. It certainly can't tie a knot like that. These are extremely flexible, you see? So what's the benefit to that? Well, what the benefit to that is, not that you should tie knots. That actually is not good for the hose. Any hose. But the benefit to that is this. You can take this hose and just watch what I'm doing here. And if you want to coil this up, you want to pack it in your dive bag, or you want to put it somewhere, look what I can do with this regulator. My gosh, when I get finished <coughs> rolling it up like this, I can almost put this into my glove compartment. I can certainly put it in my wife's purse. <laughs> She's not listening. And see how compact, how small it is? This is fantastic. It's really small. You can tuck it anywhere, almost. So that's a big benefit right there. 
Are there other benefits? Well, yes. These are actually tougher. The rubber hoses are subject to breakdown. Uh, ultraviolet rays, sun, heat, all of those things affect the rubber and eventually it gets stiffer and harder, starts to dry out and can break down. Now, they may take a long time, but they last a long time. That's not a problem here. Also, <clears throat> this nylon is less likely to get nicked and scratched if you hit coral or rocks. It's actually less likely to get nicked and scratched. So they're lighter, they're tougher, much more flexible. There's lots of benefits, and we haven't explored them all yet. You might notice, by the way, <clears throat> that the high pressure hose, look at this high pressure hose on here, compared to uh, the, the regular hose. Look at how small it is. Well, sure, there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, <clears throat> The high pressure hose feeding, feeding air supply to your SPG, uh, the, the, the inner tube is extremely small. Almost, it's not microscopic, but very, very small. Not much air doesn't travel through this hose. It's just the pressure, enough air so that the pressure gauge is there, but air doesn't flow through. And you don't need air flow. It's not like you're breathing on it, you see. So the inner core is extremely small, but also it's a safety factor so that if it did ever break, <clears throat> you don't have reams, you know, vo high volumes of air pouring through that hose because it's a small diameter, not much air goes through it. So it's a safety factor too, but it's very, very small. So they were able to make the flex hose for high pressure, for the pressure gauge, very, very small. Still light and flexible, you can still, look at that, you see? But it's very, very small. It's kind of neat that the high pressure hose is smaller than the low pressure hose. It strikes some people as being odd, but there's a reason for that. Okay, so if you say to yourself, okay, I think that's a good idea. I like I travel, I want to have lighter hoses, the flexibility is nice, my wife has lots of room in her purse, whatever your reason, go to your local dye store and say, hey, I'd like flex hoses from my regulator. <clears throat> Some regulators come with them already. It's a slow trend, but it's definitely happening the last two or three years. This particular regulator is from Oceanic, and th this is this is the standard flex hose that goes with this high quality regulator. Also, several companies are now using flex hoses on the safe second. Very, very common on the safe second. Uh, so some of the companies are slowly changing to flex hoses already. There is an indication that the flex hoses are affecting the market. You can go to them, go to your dye store and take your regular and say, I want to change my hoses. Uh, it, it might be more economical at this time if your regulator is old to look at a new regulator with flex hoses. Now, that's up to you and your local dye store to decide, but you, they can actually change them. I'm going to guess at about $25, $30 per hose. You can change all four of these hoses. That's pretty good. You see, so, so $100, $150 approximately, and you can have a nice, flexible, lightweight regulator just like this. Okay, uh, if, you're, if you're changing gauges or other hoses, choose the flex hose. Now, let me say this. As with any new product, every new regulator, the finest regulators in the world, whatever, cars, everything else, when a new product is introduced to the market, <clears throat> there is often a bit of a, a, a growing up period, some teething problems. And it's quite true that a number of years ago, probably as much as 10 years ago, eight to 10 years ago, one version of this flex hose that came out had problems. They didn't last, they leaked, okay? That's been completely solved. Flex hoses that we've been selling now for the last two and a half to three years, we have not had a single problem with them. So if you're talking to somebody and they, oh, no, don't get those flex hoses, they blow up. Well, you say, okay, thanks very much. Don't argue with them. Just tell them to read up on the latest news on flex hoses. They're excellent. They're guaranteed. They last a long time. They're lighter. They're prettier. They're more flexible. There's lots of bonuses to the flex hoses. My thoughts on it entirely, you know, and, but if you go to your local dye store and ask about it, the experts there <clears throat> will share their opinions and show you how to get flex hoses. Anyway, I hope that showed you something and I taught you a little bit about flex hoses and how to change your regulators to make it easier to work with, a little more fun, a lot easier to travel with. I'll tell you right now, a lot easier to travel with. And I hope that was interesting. Now watch for my playlist sea hunt, uh, watch for vintage scuba, and of course watch for the next, next Alec Pierce scuba tech tips. Hope to see you soon. Oh, keep those comments coming. Love them. Bye-bye.